one challenge that's often mentioned in, in the automotive um, for the for the autonomous driving is the legal and um, moral maybe questions how who is responsible for an accident what if if an accident happens and, and stuff like this yeah. do you have an, an, an overview about this topic first of all of course you need uh, a different communication and uh, telecommunication network we have to shift now to 3g uh, to 4g and 5g but why why do you need this t the communication technology for the autonomous driving you have this huge mass of of information that the car needs to receive and and also to send all the time so you need really a reliable constant connection yeah so the car can really use all this information needs that kind of information and uh, and of course you mentioned safety that is of course the major concern what happens if the network, the connection breaks down by, by whatever reasons. And then it's not only a question of the car, it can be outside uh, outside factors. You have no influence on that. You will have a lot of agencies around outside your car who actually know a lot about your car, about your travel behavior, about everything. And, um, and so here in an increased way, um, Problems and questions of data privacy are coming up. Yeah. So where is this data? Then it has also been collected, maybe also for insurance reasons. You have to store it somewhere. But then how long and who is responsible? Who will delete it? After what time? And um, and it can be said like uh, yes, in general, the German uh, uh, customers, consumers are more sensitive about these kind of issues than maybe, maybe many people in many other, other countries. Yeah? But do we already have some autopilots in real mass production or is it still um, more the pilot faces? And I know Tesla has this feature, but I think they're even not telling this an autopilot, right? They say yes. driver and, assistant. And Uh, not that I know, not 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 in Germany, not not to this full extent. And theoretically, could be possible, but the systems are not interconnected in such a way that it's uh, really really enabled. Tesla, yes, and you uh, certainly know in Tes <laughs> with Tesla, uh, people also tried it, uh, especially in the US, and then even there, accidents happened, of course. So um, people are more more cautious now, and even Tesla is more cautious now, and the whole entire industry is more cautious now. I I know about a few accidents uh, from from the autopilot, and I think there were two or three. But at the same time, how many accidents did happen without an autopilot? So I think it's also sure. a discussion we need to have, right? If you can decrease uh, accidents with an autopilot, Like having an autopilot will decrease accidents by 80% or so. Maybe then it's worth to think about that. But uh, I heard a lot of experts telling that an autopilot makes sense only if a certain amount of cars having autopilots and can communicate with each other because, or maybe if all cars have this, because then you can eliminate the main risk factor, which is the human on the car, uh, on, the, on the streets, right? Because that's something you cannot really predict how the human is behaving. But if you if all cars have autopilots and they can communicate with each other, then there's a kind of the, the theoretic advantage of having this, right? Yeah. Would be still very ambitious, but uh, yes. And uh, I mean, you, uh, yeah, you, you um, reach here the important topic also, like vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication. There are also different strategies, like uh, in Japan, uh, one went uh, like the easier way, the more pragmatic way, uh, vehicle to infrastructure communication. So you have communication infrastructure and infrastructure communicates back to other cars. Um, but um, of course, to be more agile and more flexible on the road, vehicle to vehicle would be ideal. But immediately, of course, uh, understandable. Uh, that is more complexity again. Yeah. 
and uh, more complexity you have to integrate in the car uh, and uh, more complexity in the entire communication uh, um, processes which, which are going on. Yeah. Um, so there's a challenge. Um, to your uh, argument about um, um, driving assistance and uh, autonomous driving and safety, yes, of course. I mean, you have all the people who make mistakes. So um, it might be that uh, with autonomous driving, you could actually even reduce uh, the risk of, of uh, accidents. The question is then, again, only legal, who is responsible? Yeah? If the driver makes a mistake, it's the driver's fault. Yeah? And, uh, but what if the system makes a mistake? That's exactly the question. So it's less a question of um, um, who is more likely to cause an accident, but rather like who is responsible for what, which is the question. Yeah, yeah. yeah I just hope that this is uh, analyzed like calm in a calm way and uh and then decided because if i see that by autonomous driving or by autopilots i can reduce significantly the amount of of accidents uh, i only have to solve the responsibility question that we find a good solution for that because yeah the developer and i mean we, we are also a developer right then to take over all the risk on a programmer right on an individual programmer or on the company that's developed. Another aspect, joy of driving, is a very important and always underrated factor uh, when when new forms of mobility are discussed. Um, people uh, love driving, and uh, it's the sensation of the curves uh, of the movement itself. Uh, it's also this, and it belongs to it. Uh, acceleration of course and, and braking slowing down and all that which is a physical a very important physical experience but also like the joy of i'm the driver i'm guiding this vehicle yeah so um autonomous driving in this um it's also an ambiguous uh, thing, you know, like in my impression, it was a bit like autonomous driving was very much pushed um, by the industry and uh, maybe also by academia <laughs> in a way for, for a number of reasons. Not so much consumers like, oh, yes, I, I like I need a car, you know, like uh, where I just sit in and drive. Of course, there are many people who who see the advantages of that, especially uh, people who are underway professionally, I have long distance driving, boring, you know. So during that time to do something different, perfect, you know. And um, different to, to, of course, people who drive more in the region, closer and, uh, and um, enjoy uh, just to, to drive through, through a certain landscape. And um, so... And, and, and not so large distances. So for them, it's not that relevant, maybe. Yeah. 